together with American songwriter, we had the chance to talk to Kat Mayos. Adam was able to talk to Kat over the phone, and she has a new single out, Back for More. Check out our YouTube channel and Facebook page at Bringing It Backwards, and uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bringing Back Pod. And we'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcasts wherever you listen to these podcasts. We're Bringing It Backwards with Kat Mayos. Hey, Adam, this is Kat Mayos. How are you doing? I am great. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's always fun. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. Of course. Cool. Um, Yeah, I don't know how much you know about our podcast, but it's all about uh, your journey in the music industry and how you got to where you are now. Oh, sweet. Well, I know all about that. (laughs) Right on. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me, did you grow up in Venezuela or did you, were you just born and were you born in America? I didn't. didn't. My dad actually, when he was uh, 21, he moved to Texas. He's a doctor. So he did his residency in Texas and I ended I grew up there. Actually, I, I was born there and then we moved to Vegas when I was two. So I, I grew up in Vegas. Oh, wow. How was that? Um, you know, I didn't really know anything different, uh, but looking back, I realized it's not the norm for most people. Mm. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I got into a lot of trouble when I was in high school, but it was, it was the good fun kind of trouble, you know? <laughs> yeah. I always you know, thought about that. You've gone a lot further in Vegas. <laughs> right. I always wondered about that. Like growing up there, like in high school, you could just go to the strip. Like oh, there's, yeah. there's no we need did. for like kids to have high school parties and stuff. Right. If you can just go and do. Yeah, we we would get hotel rooms. <laughs> oh it was, man, it was dangerous. I've actually like I wrote like for fun. I wrote like a like a pilot for a TV show based on my my youth. You know, that would make a great show. High school I kids know. renting out apartment or hotel rooms in Vegas yeah. and just running it's a amok. Pretty exciting. It's a pretty exciting pilot. I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I was going to ask if there's any places like locally for you to play music, but uh, apparently there's a million of them if you grew up in Las Vegas. <laughs> there are a million of them. They're all not happening right now, but um, sure. yeah, you know, I, I actually just came back um, to Vegas in the last six months. I lived in LA for like 10 years and I just came back here. My timing was pretty interesting to do that. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And, but yeah, things have closed. So <laughs> when Is they your- reopen, I'll re-explore yeah, yeah yeah is your family still in vegas my parents are still here yeah and i oh, got my cool. own place here and and uh, yeah it's interesting you know i love la i never thought i would leave la i mean i still my still have my jobs in los angeles i mean i did a lot of auditioning for commercials and stuff like that and i, I booked a few a couple years ago and then and then i've just been doing a lot of songwriting um so Though that when I say I've kept my jobs in LA, that's what I mean. Like you know, when things get back up and running again, I'll I'll go back for auditions and I'll go back and take my session. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. So tell me, how'd you get into music originally? I always sing. That was just kind of the first thing I did. I started writing songs really early. I mean, I, the first song I wrote, I was like, I remember it like at five, five, six. I was writing songs, and I just always sing. I took lessons. I was always the kid that was like who's going to do the solo cat will do the solo, you know, and mm-hmm. it was always, I didn't go to perform performing arts type of high school. So like, you know, there wasn't, and I went to a small high school. So I was typically like the person in all the plays singing and stuff. And I, I was part of a theater company in Vegas um, from 10 to 18 outside of school. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty serious. And it was, we put on five shows a year. If you weren't cast in the show, you were crew. So I mean, it took up as much time as like a part or full time job, just depending on your role. And um, I did that for eight years. So that kind of set me up for a life, you know, in, in entertainment, I think. Yeah. Because you're constantly performing. Wow. Constantly performing, constantly around performing. And, you know, once a week, it was called Ensemble. And every Monday we, we met and we had classes and then we had like a group meeting. It was like 60 kids from all different schools, high schools, um, middle schools in, in Vegas and I met a lot of people like I saw I met people of all walks of life in that program and it really grounded me you know because I went to a private school from kindergarten to 12th grade so to do a program like that that was it was like inner city and it was really good for me Mm -hmm. you got exposed to a bunch of different people that way yes yeah for sure and then that 
because I did that, I, I went to college initially for acting and then I ended up leaving regular college and I went to music school. So, Oh wow. Yeah. I just kind of, yeah. I just kind of just kept following the path. So you were kind of, well, cause you were in, was it like musical theater or just, you did all types of plays? And it was all types of plays. It was a lot of straight theater. So when I went to college, I actually went to college for, for BFA acting, just mm-hmm. straight acting. Um, and when I transferred, that was in Boston. And when I transferred to LA, I, I, I transferred to a school that wasn't an art school. And so, you know, I just kind of got bombed having to take like math and science again. Yeah, totally. Um, the one thing, yeah, the one thing I enjoyed at that school was my guitar lessons. And so my teacher was like, well, you should look into a musician's Institute cause it'll, it'll just be, it'll just be guitar, you know? So I went there for guitar and recording sound. And then I worked in a bunch of recording studios. Um, I was in the studios and engineering and assistant engineering for a little bit, but I kind of realized I don't have the stamina to be a recording engineer. I mean, they pull like crazy hours. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really just went through the recording program because I wanted to be able to record my own demos and have them sound good, you know? And so I, yeah, I just kind of, I don't know. I worked in studios for a while until I burnt out on that because I was working in major, major recording studios with huge artists and, you know, watching them come in every day and do what they love is starting to kind of get me down in my early twenties. So um, I ended up leaving that scene and, and that's when I started a garage rock band and I kind of did that for a few years. And then I just got a little burnt out on, on the playing out in LA scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just like hooked up with people that got me into more co-writing, um, like into more sessions for, for film and TV and stuff. And that's, I don't know, it's kind of in a nutshell how I am where I am now able to work remotely with a bunch of different people. And now I know like a ton of different producers. So it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That is cool. That is really cool. What made you decide yeah. that uh, like acting wasn't what you wanted to do? Like when you were in I Boston still, College? I still want to do acting. And I, a few years ago, I booked three different commercials, um, like Motel 6, one for Marlboro. Like it was an um, internet overseas. You <laughs> can't do Marlboro. I was going to say. And then I, <laughs> yeah. And then I did, I did this weird commercial for um, tourism for the city of West Hollywood where they, uh, I, in all three commercials though, I play a musician. So it's not, it wasn't much of a stretch of my, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> my training and my talent, but, um, yeah, acting is something that I want to, I'd, I'd like to do more of it when, when productions start again. And I have a commercial agent. It's hard to get a theatrical agent for, you know, just straight acting. So I've mm-hmm. tried, I'm still, I'm still trying to get that going. Ah, I see. Well, I thought you said, um, maybe I misunderstood you. Didn't you, you said you went to college in Boston for, for acting and then you, yeah, I did. And then you went to LA. Like, did you graduate yeah, from so school I to move to LA? Junior year. Okay. No. So I transferred junior year to LMU and then I like did not, I wasn't for me. And uh-huh. so I transferred from L- LMU into Musicians Institute. I just went there and said, Got um, it. And I did graduate from Musicians Institute for guitar and recording sound. Okay, so you didn't want to go back to school for just theater or just for just acting I, when you're in LA. Well, you know the reason, the main reason I left was because when I got to LA, they told me that I had taken all my acting credits in Boston because I was, you know, BFA at an art school in Boston. Like all I took was acting. Mm-hmm. So by the time I got to LA, they were like, "Oh, we've taken all the credits you need for the acting part. Now we're just going to have you take math and science and history." And I was oh, like, "No." I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense yeah. now. So then you're like, "Okay, well, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to go to music school." Yeah, I took a five-year leave of absence from LMU, and at the end of my five years, I was like, should I go back and get, you know, a bachelor's degree? And um, it's like, at that point, like, it was crazy, like, tuition had, like, tripled, and I was like, no. Yeah, so no. I just kind of... I have a bachelor's degree, and I don't think anyone's ever asked for it once, or even, like... I know. I don't even know where the hell it is, to be honest. Honestly, it's... It, it's enough for people when I'm like, I went to Emerson College, LMU, and Musicians Institute. They're like, cool. I'm like, right. Hey. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's it's very true. I was like, you know. Yeah, they're not going to say, well, let me see the degree that you received. Can yeah. I have like a hard copy no emailed over? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right on. So yeah. tell me about uh, the, the garage rock band that you started after after school. Yeah, it's called Grit. And uh, I'm probably going to put that music back out. I It was called Grit. I found it was very hard to search it because a lot of things are called Grit online and, you know, in the music, Mm -hmm. in the music uh, 
section of all streaming services. Every, you type in grit, a million things will come up. So I tried trademarking it. You know, I did kind of trademark it, but then I was going to have to like take on like three bands that also had grit in their name. And it, it just like became a point where I was like, this isn't worth it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I started going, I started, I re-released all that garage rock under my name. And then, and then I was like, I'd say that was in 20 summer 2017 I think is when I re-released it under my name and then in 2018 I started working with all these different producers because I was co-writing you know trying to get music and film and tv and I just like my sound just started you know changing I've always written a lot of different types of music Mm -hmm. and so getting to co-write with a lot of different producers you know they didn't want to make garage rock songs they wanted to like make pop and you know R&B and like all these different things and I was I fall in love with like every song I write and you know, it's kind of how it works, you know, but some more than others. And I just started like falling in love with certain pop songs. And I, I really just like felt strongly that I should start putting them out. And after playing in a band for five years, you know, the members changed a lot. I was like constantly like, I was like kind of band mom. Like it wasn't, it was kind of tiresome to like feel like I was the only one that cared, you know? Sure. And so, yeah, so I just needed to change, honestly. And so I started playing out um, the pop stuff. And that's like, honestly, when things really started to change is when I made a change. So it was pretty cool. Um, I started working with a couple of different publishers. Um, and one of the publishers had a producer top liner team, like write me to write me an EP to put out. And, and that has been the best, I'd say, of anything I've put out. Mm-hmm. That was the Royal the Royal T P I put out last summer. Got like a really big PlayStation sync with that. Wow. Got some cool. other good syncs. Yeah. Yeah. I had gotten a Pepsi sync and I was like freaking out. And then it was actually um for soccer in the UK. Oh um, wow. for this year. Yeah, it was for this year. So, you know, all sports were cancelled, so I'm not sure that commercial will ever come out. I know, but it's still cool. It is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's I mean, yeah, this whole thing has been it sucks. It's so bad. It yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's the worst. It's, seriously. I think like, it's gonna change so much with as far as like the way that companies pay, you know, because I know of other people that had really monster, you know, placements for film and TV that got paid and then the, 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 you know, the ads won't come out because of how everything changed. Uh-huh. And so I think it's, I think it's going to change how these companies are paying. I think they're going to start waiting till the ads run to pay, um, which is understandable. Yeah. A lot of money. No, totally. So. Yeah. Cause they're paying you out for something that they didn't even end up using. Yeah. But, you never know. They might <laughs> yeah, keep, they but, might save it and use it next year or something. <laughs> well, a friend of mine was joking because the song that they chose is called "I'm gonna." It's called "Whatever I Want." And the lyrics are "I'm gonna do whatever I want." And my friend was like, "Well, now it's kind of more like I'm gonna do whatever I'm told." So I was like, <laughs> yeah, that is sort of the vibe now. Totally. Not sure. <laughs> Maybe they'll ask me to re-sing some new lyrics to it. I don't know. <laughs> that's funny how did you start getting in well like with i want to go back real quick to that band grit did you guys like yeah tour and stuff or what in like we played one-off shows in different cities we would go like one-off like we'd go to san diego one time flew to nashville like you know it was like kind of random vegas we'd come to vegas from la mm-hmm. um i'm in san diego where did you play do you, do you remember uh i played for one of the colleges down there actually it was oh really, cool really fun Rad. Yeah, I can't remember which one. Uh, KTSD? <laughs> or does that sound like a thing? Um, I don't know. We did like some little radio. No, that's a radio station, KTSD. Got to do some radio stuff. Um, cool. I always wanted to go on tour. I always wanted to. Um, but like the more, you know, it was, it was super garage rock. It was like me and like a couple boys. And like we would like pack our stuff in the car and drive down. And like after a while, it's kind of like, you know what? It's kind of touring. I really, I have always dreamed about doing is not me like cramming myself in like a car with like, you know, sure. two other people and roughing it, you know, and I have a lot of friends that do that and they are lucky if they break even when they get back, you know? Yeah. And it just, it wasn't, a, it's like probably has never panned out in that way. Cause like that doesn't excite me. <laughs> yeah. so. It's like, it's, it seems glamorous if you had like the tour bus and the, you know, yeah. 10,000 fans I, waiting for you. Doing, <laughs> but yeah until what then. i started doing was i would like fly to other cities and i would hire um, musicians in those cities to play shows with me like i went to south by and my cousin played bass and his friend played drums for that show that's right um just 
same yeah I just started doing that but that was also like had its own like set of kind of like a little bit of stress because you're like all right did these people really learn these songs before i got here you know and mm, so yeah each, good point. each show was a little bit mixed you know because you, you could you could tell who put the time in and who didn't it was a little i'm a little bit of a perfectionist so <laughs> yeah so yeah so from that band that's when you decided to start your solo thing um, yeah, mostly because you couldn't, you couldn't find it, My, you know, you couldn't find grit. You couldn't find me if you searched it. So I just like changed it to my name. And then, um, those songs, I got like some placements for those grit songs. And I just kind of like, I just kind of realized like that is for me where the money has been, has been in like getting ads and film and TV placements, and stuff, yeah. you know? So I was like, oh, okay, I've been doing it for like five years. And what I really want to do is like be able to make a living off of it, you know? And mm-hmm. so I just like switch my focus i mean like i would be lying if i like i miss it so much playing in that garage rock band it was the most cathartic show that i could have you know because in my pop thing i might play guitar on a couple songs but in grit i played guitar on every song and it was like very thrashy like i like smash things you know it was like mm-hmm. it's it just like i was i was able to let out all the steam that i have in that in that project and and i definitely need and miss that yeah so with the pop stuff, have you played live yet? Yeah, so I did. I I did in like 2018. I played a few shows. I got to play the Troubadour. I got to play the Super Great Night. Um, wow, that promoted that's really well in LA called School Night. That was a great show. Um, oh, I played I've a heard place of called that. Hotel Cafe. Yeah, yeah, it's great. That one changed, like changed my life. That's like that's where like this publishing company like scouted me at that show, and they like yeah took me under their wing, and that's been such good good experience for me so every show is important you know like I look back at how many shows I've said no to because you know like I said I'm kind of a perfectionist so like if I can't have the drummer I want or like if I can't have a full band I'll turn something down but I actually like going forward I'm just gonna like say yes more even if it's gonna be me and an acoustic guitar because like every show you meet someone every show leads to something it's crazy wow so that school night show is the the one that got you the syncs and stuff or started getting you syncs because you got the publishing deal? That one. So I'd had some syncs, but it brought me a new publisher um, that like found a loophole to work with me. So basically I'm like signed exclusively to one publisher, but the this uh, position music is the name of the one that found me at that show. And they uh, basically were like, we have to find a way to work with you. And the loophole is like, if I don't write it, then I can, I can work for them. I can just sing it, you know? So, ah. um, yeah, so it's pretty cool because uh, I had not done that before. I had not sung other people's songs and like put out other people's songs. I hadn't done that, and it's like proved to be a good, you know, a good risk that I took. You know, because at the end of the day, like I love those songs, but they were definitely there's parts in each, like a couple of them that I was kind of like, I don't know if this is really me. I feel kind of, you know, but I took a chance. You know, like if you look at most major, very successful artists, like they do not write their songs or like all of them you know sure yeah there's a handful of people so, that write the the hits <laughs> the big hits yeah i was like you know what rihanna doesn't really write her music no. so it's working out pretty good for rihanna i guess i'll take a chance she's probably like i have this idea that when you know when i did this one time and they're like okay we got it and then they just write out the whole yeah. thing yeah <laughs> probably um, i'm sure that yeah that's crazy um wow uh well now like if you're if you're writing for film and TV and stuff, are you trying to? Did you have to change up your like style? Like, are you writing songs specifically to try to do that? Like, or do you just put sometimes, out what you put yeah. out? Yeah, sometimes for sure. Like, I definitely and and sometimes I'm like told what they're look what music supervisors are looking for. You know, they'll be like, "We're looking for songs that are kind of like." we're undefeated or like songs that are like back to school ads, you know, like stuff like that. So you kind of get a prompt on a lot of them. Mm. Uh, but I try to make each song something that I would want to put out. You know what I mean? Like I just, I try to definitely make it personal, like back for more. Um, let's well, it's out in Europe, but because of everything that's going on, actually universal music group pulled everything um, that was coming out in the U S this week. So they pulled my song, but it'll come yeah, out. Yeah, it's supposed 8th. to come out yesterday, right? It was, and it did like everywhere else in the world except for the United States. So in the United States, it comes out next week. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, because I can't even. I looked like on Spotify and stuff. I can find it. 
Yeah, it was so funny because the night before it was there and I was like, yay, it's there. And then I like woke up in the morning and I like had all these emails like, oh, we're so sorry. They pulled it. And I was like, what? I was so confused. I was uh, like, oh. <laughs> so it's coming out next you week know, then. It's the eight, okay. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a weird time to be like promoting music. You know, it's a, it's a, you feel a little bit weird about pushing yourself right now. You know what I mean? Because there are totally. things much bigger than my song that are happening. Sure. You know? Yeah, it's definitely so, yeah. I'll feel better about blasting it next week, but I felt bad because it was my first my first time like working with with Cloud Kid, who's the, the division of a major, and I was like uh, like that's kind of a big deal, you know, for me. And so I was I was like, well, this is strange, but okay. Yeah, tell me so about working with Cloud Kid. They're so sweet. I mean, I like <laughs> I was like planning to go to Germany this year and meet them, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Um, I submitted music to them. I guess last year when I was about to put out my world EP because, you know, they'll, they'll put out, you know, they'll put out a song, but they also share a lot of people's songs just that they like them. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to get them to share my EP last year. And um, I was like really surprised they reached out to me after listening to it. And they were like, well, we don't want to just share this. We want to put out this EP. And I was like, wow. But at the time position music, you know, had just kind of paid for all of it. And they were like, we're not giving away this EP. You're crazy. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I was like, dang, but I also understood. So I kept, you know, the relationship going with them and, um, they're very cool. Like they asked me to sing a bunch of covers of like, for whatever reason, they never made it. They were like, we're going to go with the guy, but we liked your version. And I was like, okay, I just kept trying. Like, I didn't want to take no, you know, and like for an answer, but I knew that they were never saying no. They were always saying no, but keep sending us stuff like, you know, cause you know, something will stick. And, and back from more was sort of about that. Honestly, it was a little bit about them, you know, because, um, when they shared a couple, they shared one song from the Royal DEP just to be cool. And they wanted to share more. And then there was like a clash with positions. So they didn't, but, um, yeah, it was just like, I'm coming back from more music with these people. just cause like, it's, it's they've definitely made a big difference in like people that are listening to my music and, and they're just good guys. They're cool guys. So I hope to meet them in person and the, they'll like listen to anything. They're like, send us anything, even if it's just like you singing like into your phone recorder. Like if we think it's cool, we'll match you with a producer. And I mean, that's cool. It's kind of the sky's the limit in that case. You know, I feel, I feel safe like sending them whatever. Yeah. And they're, they, they put it where out on like their YouTube channel or something. Yeah, they put it out on YouTube and um, they, they have a pretty good Spotify thing going on. And, you know, they're thinking outside of the box right now. They felt really bad that release day got a little weird yesterday. So they're just, they're just like being as helpful as they can. That's great. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that comes out, well, now on the 8th. Did you put on a record no. earlier this year? I did. I put out, I did another EP with Position Music, but it was all cover songs, but it was the same producers as the Royalty EP. So... Um, it was, it was fun to do it. Cause that like first EP, like I told you, I couldn't write it. I could only sing it. But on this one, I mean, I couldn't, I didn't the loophole was they were cover songs. Right. So none of us wrote them, but like, it was fun to, to like, I actually got to be with them while they were like making the instrumentals and I got to have a little bit of hand in, you know, what I sang in the moment melody wise. So it was super fun. That's cool. I love, I love, I love how that turned out. Like my favorite song on that EP is the cover of Tainted Love. And I love the soft cell version of it from the eighties. Sure, it's like, yeah. It's like a movie called Conehead. I feel like it's like pretty. It's pretty. I know. Conehead. Version that movie Conehead. Yeah, yeah. I've totally seen. Conehead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that that song is like the theme of that movie. Yeah. Where the soft cell version, mm -hmm. and um, I like was re-watching clips from that movie, and I like forgot that like Dan Aykroyd, like he's fighting this crazy monster. And he's like singing Tainted Love in the scene, like to distract the monster. It's so funny. But um, <laughs> yes, I, I digress a little bit. But um, yeah, I was really excited to do that cover. And it's my favorite one on that EP. It's exciting. How did you decide on the songs? Like, I see that you cover, it looks like you covered Bowie and uh, John Lennon. And so you had a list, like, the Position Music had a long list, and we kind of were like the three of us, um, me and uh, C. Todd and, and my friend Amit, who was producing, we all just kind of were like chiming in on what we thought was cool or like what someone had an immediate idea for. And they were like reading a list and they were like, Tainted Love. I was like, Tainted Love, we're doing it. Like, no, <laughs> we're not even a discussion. I was like, it's not a discussion. So That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. So tell me a little bit about the, the new song coming out on, on the 8th. You said... Is it just going to be a single? Is it going to be part of an EP? 
I think I might put it on an EP. I have been working on it, um, getting songs together for an EP that I want to put out later this year, um, and it would fit on it. So I guess it's just going to come down to like how many finished songs I have in a couple months. You know, like if I feel like it's missing a song or and it needs like one more, then I'll throw back for more on it. You know, cool. maybe I should, and then just call the EP back for more. You know, because that would kind of make sense. There you go. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I can just keep using that name as an excuse to come back for more. <laughs> that's awesome well i'm really excited to hear it uh next week we'll we'll, we'll actually be able to check it out so uh back for more yeah. next week um what have you been what have you been doing to like you know keep yourself occupied as far as like creatively with the the, the quarantine and everything have you been able to write have you been able to collaborate with anyone yeah i have done some remote sessions so I've written probably like four songs, but not not for this project. For this, for this, like a, for an, an EP follow up, I'm working on. Um, I'm trying to rework songs that I did like a couple of years ago. Um, I I don't know why that I do that a lot, and I did that with Back for More. Back for More was actually like a song two years in the making. We did a version that was sort of garage rocky, and I loved the like I thought those lyrics were great you know but I was like I'm not gonna I can't put this out like I'm you know I'm taking a break from garage rock right now and so I just asked those producers if they would redo it with me so I'm kind of redoing I'm kind of doing that for some other songs and then I like I said I did like I had like four sessions just for just for songs where you know we got prompts from publishers and music supervisors were looking for this specifically and um I moved into a new place here in Vegas and I'm like uh, so it's like moving takes forever and I'm trying my dream here is to like convert my garage into like a like a home studio so uh there's so much stuff in my garage right now that I can't even get in there but I've been upgrading all my equipment so like I got I got a new interface I got a new computer I've just kind of like been trying to get it all slowly going I feel like this year just feels like constantly breaks are just like being put on you know what i mean sure yeah <laughs> it's like it just feels very stop and go you know it's like it's crazy it's like one you know you I don't, you know i don't even know and this year is just and then I, I mean in january i found out i had had like shoulder problems like on and off for years or whatever but uh -huh. whatever i just like was living with it and then i found out in january i had to have like surgery so like for the first three months of this year i actually was healing from surgery oh my gosh um I know. And right when they, my doctor was like, okay, you can like start working out again. You can travel again. Cause I had two weeks, um, back of back-to-back -back sessions booked, um, one in New York and one in LA. And I mean, but then coronavirus hit like right around them. So I had to like cancel all of that. And so I feel like I've been quarantined since January and it's been like so crazy this year. Oh my gosh. I went through a uh, <laughs> surgery last year. And I'm like, you know, 2019 sucked. I, like, I'm hoping for the best. Oh. And then it was like, this year has been 10 times worse. <laughs> I know. I'm like, we all need to collectively stop being like, next year is going to be better. Because I think we're all jinxing it or something. Like, I'm not even going to speak a word about 2021. I don't want to know. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm well, sorry that you went through that. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. I, it's just like, it's, it's funny now. I'm like, wow, that was awful. And then, well... You know, this is pretty much worse. So, but uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Have you got? Have you been doing any like uh, Instagram live or Facebook live? Any of that type of stuff? Performing songs? We did one. I did one thing. Um, you can find it online. It's uh, we did an acoustic version of Fame, the David Bowie song, and it, it's me and the two producers that produced the last EP I just put out called Covers. And uh, yeah, that was fun to do. Um, I was watching all the lives before we did that. I didn't want to do one, honestly, because like the ones that I found the most interesting were that I have a couple friends that they are in bands with their boyfriends or their husbands. Mm -hmm. And so whenever they would do like a live from home, it would be like, you know, you're looking at like two to three people in the same like setting. And it was really, it was just interesting to watch their chemistry and see them in their home, you know? Uh, but then, yeah, just, um, I don't know. I just, um, they didn't want to partake in the like live from home, live from my living room. But we did do the um we did do a fame acoustic thing that we cut together that turned out way cooler than I thought it would. So Oh, I think I'm seeing it right now on your Instagram page. It's like you three yeah, bots, it, you and two other fun. guys. That's rad. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it sounds really, really good. It was uh not easy to like 
be every. I was like the sound engineer, the camera person, the lighting person, the a talent, the hair and makeup. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that, I'm sure that would <laughs> that'd be a lot, especially with like latency and stuff. Days, yeah. I'm not even kidding. It was two days. Like I did it one day and like sent it to my, to, to the guy playing guitar in that video, and then he was like, no, you you need to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, you need to do another yeah. version. <laughs> well, it looks great. Oh, I'll yeah. have to take a listen to it uh, when when we're done on the phone. But uh, again, thank you so much, Kat, for, for, for taking time out of your day to chat with me. I really appreciate it. It was super fun chatting. Thanks for asking me all the good questions. Yeah, I have one more for you uh, before I let you oh, go. Oh, yeah. If that's cool. I got nowhere to be. I got nowhere to be. <laughs> Quarantine, man. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, you know what? I do. And uh, <laughs> I do. I get a lot of emails and a lot of uh, people writing me on Facebook, like asking me for advice and stuff. And um, to be honest, like my life, when I look back, it's like been a total butterfly effect, you know. And the, I would tell people actually to just cold email, like people that are trying to get into music, pub, you know, writing for film and TV, um, just cold email your catalog of music make sure it's good make sure the production quality is good like make a private sound cloud of all your songs if you don't want to put them out publicly yet you know what i mean and and like just email that research all the publishers research the labels research the managers research the people that you really want to work with you know mm -hmm. put like a little bit of time into it and just cold email them because someone will respond like honestly someone will respond that is how almost everything has happened for me is that I cold emailed my music and like one time I emailed a lady cause I wanted her to do PR for me cause PR is actually still a very important, you know, aspect of, of the music industry. Um, I wanted her to do PR for me and she wrote me back and she was like, mm, I might do PR for you. I don't, I'm not feeling like I can help you. It was when I was doing garage rock and she was like, but your songs are really good. And I also have a publishing company and we can get these songs on the TV. And I was like, oh, dang, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I did work with her and she did get me like three different placements, you know? So like you, you honestly, you never know. I just, I just like, I still very much believe in cold emailing and reaching out to people. And, um, you know, people always want me to like introduce them to the people that I work with, like people I don't even know. Like I went on a date once, I'm not even kidding. I went on like uh, an internet app date once mm -hmm. and the guy like he didn't know anything about me but like we sat down and we were like, like saying what I did and he was like will you give your music publishers my music and I was like <laughs> no no I won't like what the heck is wrong with you bro like I don't even <laughs> know you I don't know what your music sounds like I'm not gonna put my life on the line for you sure career on the line yeah. oh my god but like that's it's that's the thing like I I I grew up when I didn't have parents in the entertainment industry. Both my parents like were in the medical and science field. And, you know, at like seven, I really wanted them to like get me an agent because I was watching, I was watching like Mickey Mouse Club and I was like, I could do that. I was like watching this like all the time. Like I could be on Mickey Mouse Club, get mm. me to LA. You know, I knew <laughs> at like seven, I knew at seven, I needed to be in LA. And they told me no, of course. And even though I did all these things and went to school for acting and like, you know, did theater programs in the summer and all this, like no one ever, no one ever gave me like really solid advice on like how to meet people and how to get an agent. Like I just had to like figure it out. And mostly it was just a butterfly effect of not giving up. That's the real thing is like not giving up. Like if you really think, if you know, you have like amazing talent, which is like the thing I always believed the most in myself was my voice. I was always like, I know I went to like a small school growing up and like, I was kind of like, you know, a big fish in a small pond, but like, I really like felt like I had something special and I always just felt like it was the easiest thing for me to do was to sing and write music. And like, I was like, man, this has to, I have to be able to make this my life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because nothing, nothing else really made me happy outside of entertainment. So and I tried a lot of other things. I had a lot of other like part-time jobs, you know, like living in LA for as long as I did. I did so many different things to get by. And um, yeah, I guess just at the end of the day, it's like, if you, if you know you have something really good going, then believe in it and email it, email your talent out to people and someone will get back to you. And I even had a company once like be like, well, we can't help you, but I think we know someone that can. Like, I think this other guy would be really into it. And I was like, okay, put me in touch. And that was like, 
the first guy that ever signed me, he signed my garage rock band. They like put me in touch with this guy, Chris Davies, wonderful guy. And they were like, Hey, um, ask Chris all these questions you have about like music business. Cause we, you know, we're just, you know, they were some kind of, they were like a random PR company I was trying to work with. And I was like, you know, kind of bothering the person that I had pulled an email about music business questions. And he was like, I can't answer these for you, but maybe my random friend will all like loop him into the email. And that guy, Chris Davies was like, you want to get lunch and talk about this? And I was like, yeah. And then I went and had lunch with him and it turned out he was starting um, an indie label and signing garage rock bands. And I was like, well, I'm in a garage rock band. You should sign me. Wow. He was like, well, I'm going to have to listen. Yeah. He was like, well, I'm going to have to listen to it first, but he ended up signing me, you know, and I still like, he's about to re put it out. <laughs> We've been through this so many times. He's about to re release it for me. But um, just because I do want my grit songs back out in the world and I'm going to put them out as grit and noise, you know, cause you know, grit is really truly the best word to describe those songs but, <laughs> and they're noisy. They're, they are noisy. So yeah, I'm like, I'm totally meandering, but yeah, no, I would, I my, best, my best advice is to research who you think you want to work with and just write them and, you won't, you won't even believe what could happen. <laughs> 